Hi, this is Kai from Kikai Craft, and right now I'm recording in the middle of the day, and they're having their noon prayers here in Jakarta, so you'll hear a little bit of that in the background, and I think it's just beautiful. Um, so today we're going to talk about the Mont Blanc. So a few weeks ago, I shared with you my very first Mont Blanc, which is this one, and I was wondering if it was vintage. I've gone to a Mont Blanc boutique here in Jakarta since then, and they have confirmed that this is a Mont Blanc from the 1980s. So yes, it's a bit of a vintage. I'll talk about that maybe in a later video when I revisit it. In that same boutique, I got myself another Mont Blanc, and it came in this box, and when you open the box, it comes in a lacquered box. You will see this beautiful little piece of jewelry, like seriously, there's no other way to call this pen, but a piece of jewelry. Let's remove this nice lacquered box. It's very nice. And show you the Mont Blanc Bohème. Now, if you haven't heard of the Mont Blanc Bohème, this is a pen that was first introduced in 1999 they had noir et noir at that time and then they which is black and black um so it's a small pocket pen size mont blanc and it has a very decorative gemstone on its clip now the gemstones are surprisingly synthetic but they do make a really nice addition to the pen now this particular one that I got was introduced in 2005 if I'm not mistaken so it makes it about 18 years old right now and this is called the Mont Blanc Bohème Lacquer Pearl and as you can see the gemstone that it has is the pearl. Now if you look at it this is how its finial looks. It's a black a uh, background of the Blanc logo and the cap and the trim are all gold plated. It's very pretty. It also has this pattern on it. This is called the guilloche pattern, which are circles. And this is actually an architectural feature that you can see in some designs and buildings and in money as well to counter counterfeiting. Um, now, if you look at the barrel, you'll see that it is, um, it has like this, this sheen to it. Okay, let me see if I can scoot you in just a little bit closer so you see it more. And that is not just a trick of the light, that is exactly how it looks. Now, I just wanted to sort of compare it to the, um, the Caveco Iridescent Pearl. And as you can see, it has that same sort of purple blue sheen uh, on this one you can see it through the lacquer the white lacquer body all right now it is a screw cap so that means you'll need to unscrew it and when you open it ah you will see a section but no nib and that is one thing that makes this pen so interesting because if you look inside that section you'll see a tip and that tip is the nib so how do you use this pen so there are two ways for you to um get that nib out one is just to turn this end of it so it acts like a knob and there you have the nib it is an 18 karat two-tone nib all right and if you of course turn the knob that way, the nib disappears. You could also use the cap, and I think this is a wonderful feature. Now, if you screw that cap on, it will allow the nib to appear, right? And so you can use it. And then if you screw it off, it'll first retract the nib and then unscrew. And then you have your pocket pen back. Now, what kind of filler would this particular pen have? And this is again, a very interesting uh, engineering feat, I should say. So all you have to do is open that 
uh, compartment at the back. And again, you turn the body and you will see the cartridge. I've currently put in a Mont Blanc Midnight Blue cartridge on this one. Okay, so you just basically plug it in and then after you plug it in, just screw it and turn it again. Then you'll have your nib. All right, so interesting. I hope that this is a good piece so I don't worry about it twisting. Okay, so of course we wanna see how it writes. I got this pen in a medium nib. I seem to gravitate towards mediums in Mont Blanc. And we're gonna go ahead and use our Galen Leather Everyday Book for this. Because of course I like the Tomoe River paper um, on it. So let's go ahead and find a space for us. Okay. And you can come and watch as I write with this. Let me just get a guide for us. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and write. I hope you guys are close enough so you can see how it writes. I have tried this and it does write very smoothly. So, it is a Mont Blanc Bohem. It's very nice to write with. The back is not um, it's not back heavy, that's what I want to say. And this is in lacquer pearl. It's comfortable to write with, and I really like looking at the pen. While I write every so often, it gets to be a bit distracting, and this nice little pearl there, it gives it a very like appealing look as you write. I think it's a, quite an impressive pen actually. All right, so if we write without pressure, it has quite good lines. All right, and if we write with a slight pressure, given that it is an 18 karat nib, you'll see that there is some line variation to it. Okay, and then let's go ahead and just check that line variation just a bit more. As you can see, it's quite nice. All right, and let's see if the nib can keep up with fast writing. I'll just do some scribbling. Okay, it seems to be doing quite well. All right. So yes, this is quite a nice pen to use, to have. It has some weight to it. So it's quite, uh, it feels very like, was it stable in the hand? All right, and let's just go ahead and see how it fares with a little bit of sketching. All right, as you can see, it does quite well. Very good. Um, very smooth on the paper is what I meant to say. All right, um, so size-wise, how does it compare? Well, if it is posted, let's scoot you out just a little bit. If it's posted um, and you compare it with say a Caveco, which is a pocket pen, it is the same length, flee the same length. Maybe the uh, Bohem is a hair breadth longer, okay. And if we want to go and have it capped, all right, let's just have a look. All right, when capped, yes, the Bohem is a little bit longer, okay, than the Caveco. And compared to, say, the 144, of course, it will uh, look shorter and stouter. All right, um, this particular model of the Mont Blanc pens has been discontinued. 
and so it has been very difficult to find um, a model that you'd like um, and I was very, very glad to have gotten this one because the first time I saw it um, on the website, I thought it looked absolutely gorgeous and I really wanted to have it in my collection. And so I'm very glad that a Mont Blanc boutique here in Jakarta actually has it brand new. Um, so thank you for joining me as I went through the features of the Bohème, a very interesting Mont Blanc. And if you'd like to have uh, similar explorations with me, come and subscribe to my channel. If you like this particular video, do hit like. And if you have comments on Bohems, Mont Blancs, if you think there are other interesting Mont Blancs that perhaps it would be nice for us to have a look at, do leave it in the comment. I appreciate you being here. Have a great day or a restful evening. This is Kai. Bye.